Well, good morning, Calvary. I would say uh, Merry Christmas, and I've been saying Merry Christmas because at the Anderson household, if you open the door, other than the fact that the presents have been opened, it still looks like Christmas Day at the Anderson household. I don't know how many of your houses look that way. I think that's awesome. And I am trying to be okay with that, so I think it's awesome. Did I say I'm trying to be okay with that? You know, we are continuing a celebration. That's a, that's a celebration continuing on. And, and today we are continuing in our theme of unwrapped, what Christmas is all about. And today we're going to talk about celebration, but let's do a little quick reminder. Chad opened the series challenging our thinking about our decorations, making sure that the out side matches what's on the inside. Is your life truly filled with Christian values? That's the real godly decoration. The OC, our family pastor, challenged us to engage in worship and how we are called to express our inward obsession with our love of Jesus Christ in an outward way. Whether that is in prayer, whether public or corporate, or just that private time of prayer, whether it's in worship as we gather together, whether it's in attendance for this or other gatherings, whether it's studying in a life group or in an adult group, or in a women's group, or a men's group, or just some folks that chose to get together at one of the restaurants or coffee shops and say, hey, I read this. This is what it said to me. What is it saying to you? Those are all forms of worship. Or whether for me, one of the most difficult is just simply being very still and very quiet quiet, and listening to that still, quiet voice of the creator of this universe when he utters words of encouragement and lavishes compliments on me, his child, or whether he gives me direction and I hear him clearly and I am bold enough to follow his direction. Worship. Last weekend, Pastor Chad shared that the greatest gift is eternal life in and through the acceptance of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And that one of the very, very, very best gifts to share possibly would be the gift of forgiveness that you could share this season with your family, you and your family whether it's first and foremost forgiving yourselves. Because I don't know about you guys, it's a little difficult for me to forgive others if I am not forgiving myself. But there may be others that come to mind. If you can honestly sit there and say, it's well with my soul. Things may be really good with you and daddy. But there may be a child, maybe a co-worker, maybe a former associate, maybe a former spouse or an in-law, that you could offer a word of forgiveness to and unlock just a magnificent order of love and joy. Because you see God's word in John chapter 13 reminds us, by this all men will know that you're my disciples if you have love one for another. And the more love that swells up and grows inside of us, I think it exudes out in that joyous attitude that we walk around with, that we have when we encounter others. And today, I want to bring our attention to the fact that we are a people that celebrate. We celebrate. Matter of fact, as I was telling a lot of the folks, Merry Christmas, I got told, happy Boxing Day. 
And, and for me, as an American, when you grow up and you say happy Boxing Day, I'm thinking gloves and, and the gym when I was in seventh grade, and the coach would say, whichever one of y'all got something against one another, and you, you fell out in the middle of the gym, and you went at it. And I'm thinking, that's kind of a strange thing, until I realized that that's not what people were saying to me. Happy Boxing Day is actually a Canadian or an English uh, custom or a holiday that is separated the day after Christmas. And it goes back to when there were there was a servants that, that served in the upper echelons homes. And in those servants needed to work on Christmas Day to make sure that the Christmas meal and dinner and all was prepared lovely. But the next day after, those servants got to take a box. They boxed up their goods and their goodies and their gifts and bonuses if their, if their employers were very generous. And they took them home to share them with their family. And if it fell on a Friday, if the next day was Saturday, they got Saturday and Sunday off to celebrate. And then nationally now, I understand that if it falls on a Saturday or Sunday, the, the nation actually includes Monday, so it becomes a three-day holiday. So happy Boxing Day to you guys. <laughs> Mamas and daddies and grandmas, if you were busy working for all of your family, it's your opportunity to feel your box and enjoy, right? A celebrate. Well, when we talk about celebration, I began looking up. I googled celebrations. Some of you have apps on your phone that'll tell you that there are special days that are coming up. You know, whether it's toothpaste day or, or, or brush your teeth day, which are all really good hygiene days. And I found out that there were some pretty unusual holidays, some that we normally would think of. And if I were to ask you, you could probably just shout them out. But let me throw a few out there. There actually is a bath safety month. A bath safety month. As opposed to a cold shower month. Celebration of Life Month. Celebration of Life Month is that month that we celebrate the sanctity of life. Because as born-again believers, we believe that life starts at conception. And we want to offer an opportunity for every woman and every child to have a fighting chance. So we want to come alongside and encourage them during Celebration of Life Month. Hot Breakfast Month. And for those of you who don't like Hot Breakfast Month, I'm pretty sure there's a Cold Breakfast Month as well. There's St. Patrick's Day and Groundhog Day and All Fool's Day. Are you beginning to get the picture that we as Americans will near about celebrate just about anything? In other words, we look for a reason to have a celebration. And if we don't have one, we'll make one up, guys. If you don't believe it, start Googling it and looking. Now, we as Americans also, for the last month, have been in a celebration. We've celebrated in various ways. Now, I want to share a couple of those that the Anderson household has celebrated. We celebrated song about three days ago, Christmas Eve, in four services you guys, along with about 1,400 other folks, came and celebrated in song the birth of Jesus Christ. That's pretty amazing. I'm just going to be honest with you. Also, the week before that, we had a presentation. And all over this community, there have been musicals and presentations that talk about the coming and the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We participated in Christmas musicals all over this city. Matter of fact, you were just singing songs of praise and celebration of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We also received and gave gifts of every shape, every form, and every size. My prayer when I buy something is that it fits properly, right? Especially if I give it to someone else. Now, there's a picture that's floating around on Facebook <laughs> that has me in a Green Bay shirt 
that's a lady's large. <laughs> and as you can see, there is nothing lady nor, well, there's a lot of large about me. But that was one of those that we kind of took from the children's sermon, Double Dog Dare. And he said, we don't think you can get it on, Dad. Well, I got it on. Getting it on was not the problem. We took the picture. <laughs> Getting it off was the problem without tearing it. But it's there. And, and I really hope that whatever gift you got, that you were able to have fun the same way the Anderson household had fun trying on different folks' gifts that they got. And most of all, I really hope that you got the gift that you desired or the resources to get that gift that you desired. So we've been singing and we've been giving and receiving gifts. And then, of course, one of my favorites, food. Ah, oh, the celebration with the food. For the last two weeks, it seems like every night, ah, oh, we've had a party to go to. We've had potatoes of every flavor, shape, size, and form. We have had salads with everything in it you can imagine, including, I think, some weeds from some of your yards. I am not positive, but it sure looked like it. We had meats cooked, broiled, baked, fried, over-fried, over-baked of every species, and pies and cakes of every flavor that you can imagine. And probably some flavors you've never heard of before, neither have I. And I got to tell you, every one of them were delicious that I tried. Every one of them. Isn't that horrible? I really wish sometimes the food would taste really bad because then I wouldn't want to go back and continue to eat. And now as myself, I'm sure most of you can identify, you are looking and watching those infomercials for the latest diet that will hopefully help you lose that inch or five or six that you gained as a result of all of your celebration, right? Right? We love to celebrate. We celebrate by song. We celebrate with gifts and we celebrate with food. But you know what? We're in great company. We are in great company, guys. In Luke chapter 2, there was a celebration that was going on. We've been hearing about it for the last several weeks. You know, there's an amazing thing that happened. And when it happened, Jesus was born when Jesus was born, God celebrated his birth. When Jesus was born, God celebrated his birth. I want to read this to you. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace among those whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning the child. What was the saying? Behold, a child is born. Jesus is born. God was celebrating the birth of Jesus. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all of these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Many of you here today are continuing on your family celebrations. And many of you will lament the fact as cars pull out of the driveway tonight or tomorrow or next weekend that the celebration seems to be over. But I got to tell you, the birth of this child celebration is still going on 2,000 years later. You see, March the 29th of 2015, my world and the Anderson family world was rocked as we too celebrated the birth of a grandson, Anderson Michael. Oh, you can do it. Oh, that's a good looking boy right there. That's a papa's boy right there. You walk in the room, I'll walk in the room and he'll give me the biggest cheesecake smile. Way well, you can conquer the world, right? But I got to tell you, I looked and something dawned on me. 
when Jesus was no bigger than little Anderson Michael, God knew that one day that little baby would grow up and that he as the father of that baby would offer him as a sacrifice on a cross for the forgiveness of the sins of this world. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, I love you. I would give my life, but there is no way, me personally, I could offer that baby's life. And if we look at it, just this little bit of it, how much we love it, can you imagine how much our Heavenly Father truly loved us, that He allowed His Son to be crucified and on the third day rose for the forgiveness of our sins. But you see, the celebration didn't stop because after the proclamation, they continued to share as they were pondering all of the things that they had heard and God had sent his angels to celebrate with all mankind that a Savior was born. And he actually gave some names. His name will be Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Prince of Peace, hallelujah. He is the Alpha and the Omega. And the government will rest upon his shoulders. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, there's coming a celebration that only God knows the day and the hour of. There is still coming the celebration of all celebrations. And at that celebration, we all will proclaim the name of Jesus. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Everyone. And if you look in Philippians 2, you'll find out all of those on the earth, in the earth, and under the earth will bow and praise that Jesus Christ is Lord. He will establish his kingdom. And at that time, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to say to you, it will be a victorious celebration. The celebration above all celebrations for some of us. And it will be weeping and gnashing of teeth for others. Because you see, there will be two sets of people on that day. You say, oh, Chet. No, every, every, it says every knee will bow. Yeah, they will. Because you see, those who have chosen to accept Jesus as their Savior will look Jesus in the face. And they will be ushered into heaven to spend all of eternity with the creator of the universe. And he will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Not because of anything that they had done, simply because we chose to accept the gift of salvation that was offered. To all that call on the name of the Lord will be saved. If we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that God's raised him from the dead, we will be saved. You see, God demonstrated his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Here's a hardcore fact. Every single one of us in this room are a sinner and need the grace of God. And that salvation only comes through faith in Jesus. And if there is no faith in Jesus, there is no eternal salvation, period. And unfortunately, there's some of us that are sitting in this room that will hear, depart from me, for I never knew you. And you go on that rampage of saying, but whoa, wait a minute. I'm a member of Calvary Baptist Church, Lake Havasu City. Do you know who I am? Some of you even may say, I'm, I'm a life group. I've been a life group leader for years. I've not missed a service in years. I participated in building that and funding that and giving my monies and going to special programs and inviting folks to come. Matter of fact, my kids went to Calvary Christian Academy. 
I know that qualifies me. Jesus is going to say, depart from me because I never knew you. Because you didn't take that step. You knew about Jesus, but you didn't know Jesus. But there's good news for you. You don't have to remain in that state. God does not leave us in that perpetual state. We can move from mourning to joy. And it's as simple as surrendering our life to the Heavenly Father. Amen? Amen. And if you choose to allow yourself to celebrate with Jesus Christ, He'll save your soul. Now we're rounding the corner towards the end of the year 2015. It's in sight, four days away. Just a few days and it'll be 2016. And I have a question. What are you celebrating? Are you celebrating new life that you just received in Jesus Christ? Last night we baptized three and they made a public profession of faith that they were followers of Jesus Christ. Maybe, maybe that's, that's you in this place today and you want to take that step of faith. Maybe God's delivered you from an addiction that you've been fighting for years and 2015 was that year that God delivered you from that addiction. Maybe some of you are sitting here and you said, you know, this time last year there was absolutely no hope for my marriage and I'm more in love with my spouse now than I've ever been. God's healing my marriage. Maybe you received a new job or a promotion. Or maybe some of you are sitting here and you're hearing God calling you to full-time vocational ministry. We want to celebrate with you. Maybe it's the birth of a child. Maybe you received great news from the doctor and says, cancer's no longer there. The tumor's gone. The blockage has disappeared. Or maybe, just maybe, you're sitting here and you cannot wait for these last four days to go by because it's been the worst year you could ever imagine. Your temper's out of control. Your obsession over the circumstances that the world has you in has that depression choking the life out of you. Your marriage is further away from God than it has ever been. There is no hope in your life. And you're just ready for 2015 to end so you can wipe the slate clean and start over. And that'd be awesome if you really would do that and allow God to change you. But I venture to say that some of you will make a choice to step into the light and take the truth of God's word and allow it to change your life. But some of us, well, some of us will be saying the same thing this time next year. We'll be remembering those things that we should have, could have, and would have done. And we'll be making excuses. Or we'll be blaming someone else. Because you see, we can't change us. Only God can change us. We just surrender to his power and follow his leadership to change us. So what choice will you make? Will you choose to allow God to change you and will you celebrate every day that change? Or will you just choose to stay the same? The choice is totally yours. Totally yours. 
God bless each and every one of you in this room. My prayer is that God pours a blessing on you that cannot be refuted. That the presence of the Holy Spirit overwhelms you in such a manner that your life changes. And 2015 is the year you allowed God to change you. Will you join me in prayer?